Steve now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. And welcome to the 464th episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, today with two uh, informative co-hosts. We've got R Sigma. Yo. And the uh, the hot off the press P McGee. Hello, hello. And welcome to the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, a nonsensical name we came up with in 2007. Uh, the Royal We. It was just me. <laughs> Everyone gets blamed for this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Do people really think? Like, I don't know. Uh, but we talk everything Pokemon here from the video game to the trading card game to everything in between. Uh, we're just happy to have you here today. And we're happy to just like hang out and do some cool stuff. It'll be a good time. Woo. woo I mean, woo, it's woo. an exciting time. It is. An, it, it is absolutely an exciting time. I do not disagree it with you. Maybe the last exciting time for like six more months. Eight more months. Who knows? Um, I so I, I expect more us. Months, uh... uh, my answer is in four months we'll probably get something because in four months is Pokemon Day. Well, I guess there's still um there's still Snap to come out at some point. Snap isn't the same though. Yeah. Snap is <laughs> going to be, be an event. It'll be a nostalgic event for a lot of us. It's an event that lasts a day. <laughs> I, Snap is going to be like a little bit more hype than Mystery Dungeon DX, but it's going to be Mystery Dungeon DX's like pattern, but amplified. Yeah. That's that's what Snap's going to be, because Snap is just a uh, it is it's just a spinoff game. I guarantee you the gameplay isn't going to be like that it's a intense. Rail shooter, like, yeah, it's a rail shooter. At the end of the day, it's a rail shooter. Yeah, so it, it's not going to be that intense. <laughs> I think you'll have like a lot of people, especially in the Reddit, like sharing their pictures from it and stuff like that. Yeah. And probably even on, on our Discord and stuff like that. But I, I think after like two weeks, it's probably going to die off. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be like Crown Tundra where we're going to spend like a month doing stuff with it. Right. Um, Crown Tundra is really exciting. I, I'm still really excited for Pokemon Day. I think Pokemon Day is going to bring us something. It's the 25th anniversary. It's a big yeah, anniversary. It's a big I anniversary. Think. They're going to do something. Um, as long as it's not Gen 9, I'm going to be super happy. Or yeah. something that's limited purchase, like, you can only buy it for three months. Okay, so I don't understand that. why they're doing this, other than to, like, create a, a fake sense of urgency. Because, like, they just, yeah, because, I mean, we could we could take a couple of minutes to talk about that and just in gaming, well, Nintendo industry news. <laughs> <laughs> With, like, Mario yeah, 35 getting cut of off on the 31st industries. of March. I guess uh, the new Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon... Is it even a remake? It's like a port, right? Like, it's just a straight port of, like, the NES version. It's a localization of the original, yeah. Yeah, it's just a port of the original Shadow Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, which I find is the weirdest one. I would have been so much... I think it would have been really cool to see, like, the Binding Blade or something like that instead. I mean, I think this will be successful enough to where maybe they consider that in the future. Yeah, I, I think they... I, I honestly think if... I, I wish Fire Emblem would have done, like, a full-on, like... Hey, here's a pack of like three f old Fire Emblem games mm -hmm. instead of just Shadow Dragon, because Shadow Dragon's a little underwhelming to me as a Fire Emblem fan mm -hmm. because it's already come out in the U.S. It was on DS. Mm -hmm. You could play it and probably a better <laughs> version than what you're going to get <laughs> uh, in December. I'd imagine these are relatively like low effort to make. So I think if it's successful, they'll probably do more. Which I'd be okay with. I saw a lot of discussion talking about like how a lot of the effort went to like translation and stuff. I'm like, not really, because it already exists. Yeah, like fans have done it already. Well, I mean, it's fans like have Nintendo done it, and Nintendo's done it. Take that, but yeah, Nintendo's done it. Shadow Dragon exists. You can buy it. You can go right now if you own a Wii U. If you're one of the five people, <laughs> oh, I got one. There's four left. You, th three of us are here. Uh, three yeah. of us are here. <laughs> <laughs> So the two other people who own Wii U's can go over to their Wii U right now, and they can go download Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. Mm -hmm. They can go do that right now. And I think Nintendo realizes that to an extent. I honestly think the way they're doing things is trying to like make it seem like a virtual console still exists. I don't know how successful the old virtual console used to be. I imagine not so much so if they haven't brought it back. 
So I, I think they're like trying to do a different way of doing virtual console, mm-hmm. which is OK. I, I still think like I think for 20th and 25th anniversary Pokemon, we could t- totally see some kind of like collection of gens like one through three collections or individual releases like yeah i would love breaking that barrier of putting gba games on switch because then other things can do it well i i think if they do it in the way that they've been doing anniversary stuff with like the limited releases i think they're more than able to do that mm-hmm. I, I think it's the perfect avenue for it and i know somebody's going to complain about it but whatever yeah I, I mean i'd love to see something like that uh i mean we're obviously going to talk about crown, T- crown tundra today I, I don't want this to sound like a criticism of tpci <laughs> and that, like, I'm not happy with Crown Tundra because it's exactly the opposite. I, I mean, I would love to see that. I would love to see, like, Gen 4 remakes. And I think the writing's kind of on the wall for those. Eh, maybe. A little bit. I think the writing's on the wall. I, I really do. I, I think with Crown Tundra and the way that they've been filling out the decks, I think it is very intentional that half the starters are still missing. Yes. I think it's very intentional. So I was thinking about it. Th- I was thinking about it the other day, actually, Sigma, because we were talking about... um. We were talking about uh, like them rotating into GS Cup at some point and letting in uh, yeah. Calrex plus horse. Yeah, <laughs> and we, we were and I was thinking about it, and I'm just like, well, they could just like go to a GS Cup, you know, in July or something like that. Because I mean, there's not too many more rotations they can really do, right? Yeah, if they keep up yeah. the two month rotation, there's like only yeah. so many things they can do with it, right? Yeah, so we can we can get GS Cup for like two or three months around worlds or something like that, and that'd be really cool. And then you know what? You come out with um. You come out with your Diamond and Pearl remakes, and then you restart. You restart your two month cycles with just Sinnoh decks. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you just like, start with Sinnoh decks. The issue is Sinnoh decks is like half as much as what Sword and Shield's original decks was, and it yeah, yeah. Star jump, which means uh, no. It was like, so oh, I, I, I guess I should put it in quotes. I, I mean, like <laughs> revised Sinnoh decks, right? Like. <laughs> Um, I, I was the, uh, so this is a question that I don't know the answer to off the top of my head. Was the Hoenn decks in Hoenn Omega decks, Ruby Alpha added Sapphire? all the new evolutions and that's roughly Was that it? Because it ended up being 210 large instead of the 200 it originally was. Really? So is that all they like did? Frostlass. I honestly thought they had done more. Nope. Hoenn decks was 210 or something oh, like that. Even in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. That's interesting. Yeah. Like they added Deoxys at, well, Deoxys was in the original, but... They added yeah, things yeah. like Rosslass, and that's what they did. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely <laughs> right. That's disappointing. I do like what you're saying, though, because like I, I like that we are spacing out content a little more this way. So for things like yeah. playing um, online, like it actually ha- like you can come back every couple of months, and there's something new to do, new ways to play. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it doesn't get stale, and they don't have to like heavily change the rules to like allow legendaries in or something like that to make it work they Mm -hmm. just have new pokemon that are showing up or they're banning some because they're overused which is fine with me too i'm actually enjoying that format on cart i really like i really like the vgc formats yeah i think it should be three months i think it should be three months yes that's my only critique of it it's like yeah i like this it should be longer but i like this (laughs) i don't disagree entirely i i think it is very fun i think if they could keep it up my my only worry is like they try to like rush it too much and then like we get into Gen 9 next year. And I don't want that from a fan's perspective just because we're obviously having issues with them trying to push out too much content too fast. Mm. And I don't want it to be too terribly scary because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's some kind of like new mainline game coming and I, I will exclude Let's Go from that <laughs> as a mainline game as TPCI has. I would like to point that out. <laughs> Uh, I saw some discussion among some people online talking about like still doing like the let's go Pikachu and Eevee or like mainline games argument. And I mean, that's because they specifically said they were until it's like they did <laughs> until it wasn't convenient. <laughs> Play Sword and Shield, the first mainline games on a, the TV. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. yeah. As soon as as soon as Sword and Shield were announced, like they ditched that moniker like real fast. They're like, let's go Pikachu and Eevee were fun experiments. Yay. <laughs> And I, that's why that's why when everybody's like, oh, maybe there's a new Let's Go game coming. I'm like, yeah, probably not. Because, like, what do you change from a Let's Go game to just not turn it into a proper mainline game at this point? Other than, like, not finishing the decks. But now that's just a normal thing. <laughs> I don't know what you do um, to, like, because a lot of things that made Let's Go um, Pikachu and Eevee, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, were the simplification of a lot of battle mechanics. Yes. Like, you, you didn't have held items. 
you didn't have um, have abilities. You didn't have abilities, and so like, let's go to let's go Johto, where one of the big things that Gold and Silver introduced were held items. Yeah, and I think you could do that in Let's Go. It's like, especially with yeah, the but you're just pool. getting to Pokemon at that point. You're just getting to regular yeah, but it's Pokemon. The, if it's the <laughs> item pool from like Gold and Silver, it's like, oh, have a berry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so like at that point, you're just you're just making glorified versions of the games uh, you already have. I mean, that's not a bad thing. I think it's healthy for them to have an outlet to have to like be like play Pokemon, but we don't have to care about what competitive looks like. So just play Pokemon. I I honestly don't think they care what the competitive looks like now. <laughs> but uh, no, actually, they no. They more. they did a lot. They did a lot of stuff actually. When they brought back Lando, they did add Articuno, uh, the Galarian Articuno. They they gave they gave Articuno that ten speed it needed, <laughs> but no ice moves. No ice moves. But That's it okay. doesn't matter. You're getting plus two special attack. Like you're fine. Yes, <laughs> yes. It it's it's perfectly happy. That Lando better have AV. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I like that they're well. If you give it ice moves, I think then you just get ultra centralized with Articuno. It's not it's not creating mm-hmm. it's not fixing a problem. Is it's creating a new one. Ice is a very good offensive type so yes not having the defensive typing but having the offensive access would be exactly necessary. exactly and we also got new horse so we have the we have the ice <laughs> horse that so probably isn't too bad i it, it looks like it'll be good on trick room teams yes it's about which, the only place it'll be good which is good to say for a month that's no that's type. okay i'm get, okay with that you yeah. don't get that a lot uh, i'm fine <laughs> But yeah, I, I I'd be interested to see what's going forward. I, I like I'm interested in 2021 now, especially since they didn't say, we didn't get a presentation like when Crown Tundra drop like we did with Isle of Armor. Yeah, yeah I think we're just too close to Pokemon Day for them to want to announce anything. Uh, probably. I, I think they I think are like the soonest we hear anything is January again. Mm. Because like I can see I can see a world where they're just like, hey, we're going to add another thing to Swish or something like on Pokemon Day. Yeah. And then they tell us about that in January. Uh, I'm not sure I believe that because I don't think you're going to have to pay for the next. If they add some, add a couple things to Sword and Shield, I don't think you're going to have to pay for it because it's just going to be a couple Pokemon. Uh, you're probably not. You're probably not incorrect. <laughs> so they don't need to pre-announce because that new thing it. releases like, soon, right? Like the complete edition or like the like with the DLC. Well, so they don't. They don't call. They don't call it the complete edition, which is. Um, Something that I, I think needs to be made clear in the community because like people keep calling it like, oh, this is the definitive edition that came out. And it's not really. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're just they just call it Sword and Shield plus Expansion Pass. No, it's just like everything's on one card. Like that's all it is. It's not that's all it's called. <laughs> Nothing else. It's just so that you can buy you can buy it all at once on cart um, for your for your kid for Christmas. It's just to put something else on the shelves for Christmas. That's all. I mean, it is cool that it's all on card. But. Yes. I, I think saying, though, that like this is the definitive edition is a misnomer, because how many other games have we known that just have like several editions? And what yeah. company do we know that's very good at making confusing titles for things? <laughs> so like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's something more. But like, mm. I, I also wouldn't be unsurprised uh, to, after we talk about Crown Tundra for various reasons if nothing happened. So... Mm. We'll go ahead and uh, let's cut it here and let's go talk about some news. So let's cue that epic music. Coming to you live from the Lavender Town Radio Tower, this just in. And welcome to the news. Uh, for those of you who do not know what's going on, Crown Tundra came out uh, this past week, uh, just the other day, actually, as of recording. And uh, so we've gotten some time to play it. We're going to talk more about that, obviously, in the topic because it's Crown Tundra and we wanted to just like talk about it <laughs> as Pokemon <Yes>. fans. Uh, <laughs> uh, that being said, Pokemon Home did update to include the new Pokemon from from crown tundra as well as like allow you compatibility with the pokemon that are added in to crown tundra so you can do that so yeah there we go i don't know who wants to be green and who wants to be pink today i can be green um yeah so we've also been told there's going to be a new episode of what we thought was the completed twilight wings series uh and it's scheduled to release on november 5th we have no idea what the content of that episode is going to be right now though I feel like that. I don't. That seems like 
Why? <laughs> Why is indeed the correct question. Why? I like, I totally get if it was like a Pokemon Generations episode, but this mm-hmm. is more like, this is more like, hey, you know that story we finished? Yeah, we got another one. We're just gonna, we're just gonna keep going with it. We got another we episode. We got more to that. tell. We got more to tell. I, I mean, I liked the animation in the last episode a lot. No, no, so the animation I'm... was good and it was a cute concept. I like seeing Pokemon. I like seeing Pokemon in more of the way that they're represented in the game than in the way they're represented in the anime. Yeah. Uh, because the anime world at this point is just like its own thing. It's got characters from the games and that's like all of the equivalency. <laughs> but it's uh, it's it's interesting. I yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I guess mm-hmm. you're pink today, Sigma. Yeah. Oh, God, this is exciting, isn't it? <laughs> oh, joy. Uh, we we got one cap Pikachu left, I think. So uh, world cap Pikachu is coming out later this week on the 30th. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> later this week, and after it comes out, you will have a month to redeem any of the serial codes that have for these Cap Pikachus. The, the full list can be found on Cerebor, eh, Cerebi, <laughs> and we also have a link to it in our Discord channel. So get your get your Cap Pikachus because yeah, you can't Cap get Pikachus, of them and go. most exciting thing in the world. You know, I think I think in Swish, and if you look at all the Pokemon that are in there, minus all creamy, I think Pikachu has the most number of forms. Uh, probably. Um, I can't believe that. If you don't count all creamy. Um, all right. In video game battling news, the next online competition has been announced as a competition. The Tundra Tourney is single battle competition that only allows for Pokemon within the Crown Tundra Pokedex. All players who enter get 50 battle points. I will sign up for this one and I will stream this one. Uh, Sigma, remind me to sign up for it. (laughs) I I always go, oh, I should sign up for that. And I look and it's 8 p.m. on Thursday. (laughs) I was it's like, 801. I'm like, oh, I just missed it. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Uh, I guess, uh, I guess, P. Mickey, I'm going to steal this from you. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, the Galarian Birds, Regilecki, Regidraco, and Spectreer and Glacier have been clarified as being part of the list of legendaries not banned from online play. Spectreer and Glacier are the two horses for those of you uh, uninformed. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Pokemon Go news. I guess we skipped you, P. Mickey, so we're going to Sigma. That's fine. <laughs> All right. So uh, Halloween event has started in Pokemon Go. Oh, no. <laughs> More ghost types and dark types have been spawning. I I, I know there's dark types because there's a Lowland Grimers out there now. And those usually don't spawn. Um, <laughs> right? I'm, I am I like a Lowland <laughs> That's Grimer. That's interesting. I'm, I'm happy for him to be there. Um, anyways, you get two times the transfer candy and the catch candy. There's costume Gengar and costume Sableye. You get both of them through researches, so it's not going to be too hard for you to get those. Uh, there's a special research that has Spiritomb in it, and I believe there's a Galarian Yamask even past the Spiritomb level. So Ooh, interesting. That's fun. You'll want to do that now while ghosts are spawning in high numbers. So Yes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's the timed Gengar research for anyone who completed the challenge like a month ago to unlock Gengar. <laughs> <laughs> and Darkrai will be in raids until November 5th. And there's an Alolan Marowak raid day on Halloween. Okay, Yay. so like all of that is just like that used to be the Pokemon Go news segment. That used to be the Pokemon Go news segment. There's so much more. <laughs> I mean, I can take the next stop. real quick part. Oh, yeah, you, you should go with the next one, Sigma, because it's related. I just highlight it. Okay. Yeah, like I said, Glorian Yamask is in one of the researches. <laughs> no, you get and, to do the spotlight, okay? <laughs> Runer, Runer Regis' uh, evolution data is in there. He has to be your buddy while you win, like, 10 raids. Okay. Um, Yikes. Uh, they also released Sir Fetched, which you get from being your buddy and throwing like 10 excellent throws with him as your buddy. So I Yay. got that. Wow. <laughs> Spotlight hours. November. Uh, real exciting list of options coming out here. We've got Cubone on the 3rd with 2 times Stardust. We've got Jigglypuff on the 10th with 2 times Catch Experience. Uh, good old... Cantoan Meowth on the 17th with two times catch candy. And then finally on the 24th, we've got Barboach with the two times transfer candy. Wait, 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 wait. Isn't the 24th? Okay, no, it's a Tuesday. I was like, isn't that Thanksgiving? Uh, um, yeah, I, I was just like, I'm like, no, it's a Tuesday. I forgot that there are some spotlights around Tuesdays. That's fine. My bad. My apologies. <laughs> um, I, I also you say they're boring, but like I understand why they do the they do the spotlights like this because it gives people who are newer to the game a chance to get some of the older stuff. Yeah, that way you just go oh like you're a Gen One or who joined Pokemon Go in 2020 because of quarantine or something, 
And mm-hmm. so you're just like, oh, I don't have Cubone yet because he's impossible to catch otherwise. Um, we've been in constant events for the past seven years. Um, and that's the way it feels, at least. The game's been out for four. <laughs> and so, uh, I mean, so you get Cubone and Jigglypuff and Meowth and Barboach that way. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Togekiss will be the research breakthrough. <laughs> Togetic. 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 You don't even get the kiss. You get no, the you don't get the kiss. You get the Togetic. <laughs> will be the research breakthrough for November and will last until December 5th. Why until December 5th? Is I don't know. I, was, I noticed that too. That's why I included the date because I, I thought it was a little weird. That's weird. Um, also, Venusaur has left Mega Raids and Niantic now clarifies on how Mega Candy can still be acquired. Field research, timed research, and walking with a buddy who is in an evolutionary line that can be Mega Evolved. I think you also have to Mega Evolve them first for that. Yeah, I... For the buddy part, at least. I can't say this was a well-thought-out mechanic on their part. Uh, uh, no, it definitely was a well-thought-out mechanic because it gets people to buy remote raid passes to catch Megas. <laughs> 100%. I 100%. Like, I, Pokemon Go, it used to not be as obvious. Like, I didn't really notice it until, like, a year after they had done a lot of events that were very much so based on, like, um, based on, like, hatching eggs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and somebody pointed it out to me. It was, I think it was, I think it was Joe Merrick <laughs> pointed it out on Twitter that it was just like, he's like, I can only walk so much and I can only get this many eggs. He's like, it's literally a gotcha to get me to buy incubators. Yep. And I was just like, huh, I never yep. thought about it that way. <laughs> and then like all of a sudden, like this year, especially they've just like kind of cranked out like the ways that you can give them money or the things you can yeah. give them money for. Um, and like, I, like, I, I enjoy Pokemon go, I, I'll go into spurts, like month long spurts where it's just like, yeah, let's play Pokemon go every day and like really get into it. Um, and, but I don't know, this is, this is a lot of things now. It like, this is super overwhelming. Oh, it never stops. Um, I feel like the list gets longer every week. Yeah. It's just very overwhelming. I mean, I've noticed it getting longer too, cause uh, P McGee puts together a news document for us and like the go news has like got started becoming more than a page every week. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, but yeah, I think you're you're pink, or who's ever pink gets to go next. Oh, Sigma. There, there's some kind of AR mapping event or missions sure. that you can oh, get now yeah, when you spin yeah. a Pokestop. It, I don't know what it's like. They have a video on it if you care. You get like rare candies. For they just want you to like be able to make an AR thing so you can like catch a Pokemon by a Pokestop and it'd be real cool or something. Yeah, yeah. No, they're they're making you they're out they're outsourcing their work to you. Yes, uh, <laughs> that's how that's how most things for Niantic work. Like. <laughs> I I feel so bad for people who are like super into Ingress because literally like Ingress became the backbone of Pokemon Go and like they did all of the work to collect all of the data for like initial Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like they um they're, you're, as, you're getting rare candies to do that. Yeah. The, it's something. <laughs> yeah. It's an event. Um do it as, you can get rare Sigma candies already. Which is something. I Poffins, I guess. I don't actually know how to get Poffins outside of that. You have to buy them, I guess. Oh, you can so buy that's something. You can get some poppins. I don't know why. You, I have millions of berries. I don't <laughs> yep. need to feed them. Yep. Uh, I don't need to feed the poppins. <laughs> uh, Niantic, as Sigma has already said, uh, they released Galarian Ponyta and Sur- Surfetch to raids, and Surfetch can now be evolved through that convoluted method that uh, Sigma was telling you about a minute ago. Perfect. And then, yeah, um, because why should things be easy? And then players can now purchase masks for their uh, avatars on the for the Halloween event. Uh, I don't know if those are going to continue afterwards or not, but you can go get some now and put them on. Uh, so, yay! Yay! yay. Okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, so, as mentioned uh, uh, last week, Pokemon Go has been doing very special events, especially that one with Grubhug Plus. We are all very uh, very aware of that one. Uh, the but there's a new one that you can get a t- there's a new event for Verizon subscribers. That's me. Uh, the event also runs on November 7th. Verizon subscribers can get a ticket from now until November or October 28th. My bad. Timed research containing Mega Charizard Energy, Bulbasaur, Charizard, Squirtle, Unknowns, V and Z, Sableye, Patrat, Minchino, and Pharaoh Seed. And Pharaoh Seed can be shiny. No wonder they took shiny unknowns. I might do it because it's free and I can get unknowns V and Z. Yeah, I don't have those. Mm-hmm. Might as well. Like, eh. I only no have cost. the ones from GoFest. I have GNO. <laughs> 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 I have GNO. 
Uh, all right, and I'm gonna let. Uh, so we got some puckle news. That's the, that's like your general Pokemon news. Uh, uh, ten minutes, but we've got some puckle news. It's actually relatively exciting this time, and I'm gonna let a Sigma explain a little bit more about this because I know he and Shamu have done the details, and I am just a I am just a follower that was told to participate. <laughs> so we do have Fall League starting, I believe November first, if I am not mistaken. Yeah. Right? Okay. So yeah. Sigma, is there anything else they need to know about Fall League? Uh, no. All you have to do is bring a double steam to challenge the gym leaders when they're around. Yes. Um, Everything's going to be following the VGC format. Yeah. Following the VGC format, which is like everything that's not a box legend in Mewtwo and Calyrex. Mm-hmm. Um, and Eternatus, I guess, too. He's yeah. not on a box. Poor guy. Um, yes. But yeah, make your make yourself a Series 7 VGC team or Doubles team, VGC team, whatever you want to call it. And then you can challenge the gym leaders. They're the, it, the more badges you have, the harder it's going to be for you. Eventually you'll be doing best of three against them. So yes, there's only, um, there are only five gym leaders this time as well. Mm-hmm. The times when everything will be posted uh, above, but there's five gym leaders. Uh, I think you need all five to get into the, or did we say it was all five? I think we just... decided on four. I think no, we, we said four because I wanted four because I wanted to be, I wanted there to be some wiggle. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with the holiday, like yeah, right especially the with end. the holidays around. And when's so, it end? Do you know when early. badge collection will end? I mean, I think it'll still end like the end of the month. Okay, but. we'll say we'll say roughly end of and November. Expect weird schedules on the last week because yeah. of the holiday. Yeah, we'll we'll say we'll say end of the month. Uh, maybe we'll have it run like one week into December or something. But yeah, um, yeah, do it. Have fun. Learn VGC. It's a good time. I I just like doing these things in general, and it's a lot of fun just to participate. Speaking of that as well. I finally put the order in this week to get the badges. So <laughs> we, we are getting the new badges put in. And if you join the Patreon next month, November uh, at the $15 tier, you can get those badges shipped to you. Um, it's going to work a little bit differently than normal uh, because the way we're going to handle it is we're still going to have the badges and everything put up on Etsy. We're going to give you a coupon code. If you're on Patreon, that gives you the badges for free, plus the cost of domestic United States shipping. So it comes at like $18 in some odd sense um, or not 18. It'll be like 20 some dollars in some odd sense. Um, and then you can uh, so you'll save you'll still save your five bucks on the badge badges and everything by being a patron at that level. But you'll yeah. also uh, you you will also just get everything for free. But that way we can handle international shipping as well, because international shipping gets kind of pricey with Liger. <laughs> <laughs> And that way we can uh, we can get everything to you guys in a timely fashion. If you want to order extras, you can do that as well. We also still have TCG mats up on that store uh, too. We'll probably put the Summer League badges up at the same time so that you could grab a set if you haven't grabbed a set. But yeah, yeah other than that, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I still have some lying around, but if not, I'll just keep them. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> all right. So on that note, though, uh, this is a uh, good place to stop. Oh, I guess we're doing Patreon giveaway. We're giving away the horses next month, right? Yeah. Ponies? Yeah. Ponies? Yeah. Come get some ponies. Come get Yay. some ponies at the at the Patreon as well. It's a good month to be a patron at Puckle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, though, we are going to go ahead and kick it on over to Puckle's Poke Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. And welcome to Puckle's Poke Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. So let me go ahead and uh, explain the rules. The rules are there are five questions all coming to you from the Discord that are Pokemon themed. The Discord, only the Discord. Sigma and P. McGee are going to be operating together as a team to answer those questions. Due to some bonus point shenanigans, there is a possible total of eight points. They're in a race with their fellow co-host at 30 points. Whoever gets there first gets a $20 credit to PokemonCenter.com. Sigma is actually in shooting distance today. He has 25 points. So if he gets five points, he will uh, he'll go ahead and, and win this round. Uh, you too can win as well by uh, a $20 credit if you're in the domestic United States to AnimeGravy.com, the sponsors of this segment. So let me take you a look over here. Yeah, uh, we're ready to go if you guys are. Let's do it. Also, if uh, they get the 30 points, P. McGee will get whatever total rolled over for him for the next round of uh, of Poke Quiz. I'm pretty sure this has happened every time so far. I keep getting the rollover points and then losing. That's your fault. I know. That's your fault. <laughs> I get the head start and lose every time. That's your fault. All right. 
Our first question is going to be from Jeremy. What is the first Pokemon Ash obtains in the Johto region in the anime? Um, of course. Oh, I feel like it's Chikorita. It's not Totodot? It's one of the starters. It's one of the starters. Yeah, uh, that I'm confident about too. I'm trying to figure out which one. I just don't remember which one. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's Cyndaquil. I could be wrong on that, but I don't think it's Cyndaquil. Uh, he gets knocked out, so he definitely went to caught that early. That would have been a later on catch. Yeah, knocked out was like in Ilex Forest. Like he got that after the bug gym or something. Yeah. Because he had to get rid of his team as he was going so he could catch more Pokemon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I think it was Chikorita. Is Chikorita your answer? Or what's your answer? Uh, I'm going with you, Sigma. I'm between the two. I, have no, I, I, have I think no it sure. was Chikorita. Yes. Uh, Chikorita is unfortunately incorrect. No. The answer is actually Heracross. Oh. oh. And my note from Viger, from not Viger, from Liger is contrary to popular belief, there is really a pattern with who Ash catches first in a new series slash regions. In order of region, we have Caterpie, Heracross, Talo, Starly, Pedov, Froki, Rowlet, and Dragonite slash Farfetch, Galarian, depending on which, if you base it on series or region. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what pattern that is because there isn't a pattern there. <laughs> I, I don't see a pattern either. <laughs> I There's no pattern. pattern. There's a Froki in there and then a Rollet. And I'm very confused. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Our next question is going to be from Pika Lola form. His question is, what is the tallest totem Pokemon, either in Su Ultra Sun and Moon or in Sun and Moon? Okay. Hmm. Um, so going through the totems, you've got Raticate, Gumshoes. There's gumshoes. Wishy-washy. Wishy washy might be big. Oh, is that kind Araquinid? Of I don't know how that. they can. I don't know how they count Araquinid size. I'm going to um, be honest. Yeah, I don't know either. I, I don't think it's Rabombi. I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, <laughs> Kamoo is a Pokemon. Uh, Salazzle seems likely. Alolan Marowak does not. Exeggutor is never one of them, is he? No. Okay, just making sure. Lorantis is probably not. Uh, Vicavolt and Togedemaru don't seem like likely candidates. No. Mimikyu, or, yeah, Mimikyu doesn't seem like a likely candidate either, no. so I don't think it's from that island. I think it's probably between Komoo and Wishiwashi. Wishiwashi seems like a better guess. Or Raquinid, maybe. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we're missing. Um, or is that all of them? That grass one, what's its name? Uh, Lurantis. I, I don't think it's Lurantis. Yeah, I don't think it's Lurantis either. The thing is, Totem Wishiwashi isn't any bigger than a regular Wishiwashi, but I think regular Wishiwashi is really big. <laughs> um, I'm okay with Wishiwashi. I assume it counts as a, as a Totem Pokemon. It does count as a Totem Pokemon, yes. Okay. So, yeah, let's go Wishiwashi. Then. Wishiwashi it is, then. Wishiwashi is correct. Yeah. At 26 feet, 11 inches, it is the tallest by far of all the totem Pokemon. Like, it, it wasn't <laughs> given a technical totem Pokemon in, yeah. like, available. Yeah, it wasn't an available t totem, but, well, Araquanid replaced it. Yeah. In Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Um, Araquanid is at uh, 10 foot 2, then Vikavolt at 8 foot 6, and then Komoo at 7 foot 10. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Komoo's hunched over nature made me, like... <laughs> so that's one point for you guys there one for two your next question is your pokedex entry question your pokedex entry question we're going to give you a pokedex entry you have to tell me what pokemon that entry belongs to if you get it with the first entry you get two points however if you're riding the struggle bus i will hand you the second entry and if you answer it off the second entry you will get one point if you don't get it at all zero points yay all right this question is going to be from mighty malamar and it says it's ultra moon dex entry states the eggs of a bird Pokemon are its favorite. It swallows eggs whole, so sometimes an egg gets stuck and this Pokemon faints. Who's that Pokemon? Hmm. This isn't like the Sneasel line, is it? About stealing eggs? Who stole eggs? Sneasel's an option, or the other one I was thinking was Ekans. Ekans I can buy. Ekans makes more sense to me. I just remember something about Sneasel being stealing eggs or something like that. I could see it fainting, swallowing eggs whole. Uh but Ekans, I like the idea of swallowing whole and not and fainting for a bit while it digests. It seems stupid like enough of a Pokemon to do that, yeah. All right, so I'm good with going with Snake. So Ekans, Snake. Ekans is correct. Yay! That is two points for you guys. That is three for three. Then you guys two away from Sigma winning it all. Your next question, because you got the first question wrong, is going to be worth three points. 
There are seven answers to this question. I will give you one point each for the first for for two that if you give me three, that is worth one point a piece up. And if you give me all seven, that is three points. Okay. And this is from Shark Finnegan. Who are all of the seven ghost type specialists in the main series games? Oh, okay. Uh, Do we even get to count Agatha? Because she uses all points. Agatha counts. Yes. (laughs) So Morty. Agatha Morty. Uh, Phoebe. That's three. That's one point. Fantina. That, that's one. That's four. Fantina Chantal. That's five. Okay. Who other ghost type elite four are you missing? Uh, Acerola. Oh, who's that? Oh, God. Um, the one in this game. I can't remember the name. Oh, Alistair. 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 Okay. That is six. That's two points. So Sigma's crossed the line. But can we get P. McGee seven? That's the question. Yes. So which please. ones have we named from? It's everything except Gen 6. Does Gen 6 Chantal? have one? Gen 6 does not have one. That's why there's seven, because Isn't there the Gen, has Gen one. 5 um, Elite 4 person? Chantal, I think. Is it Chantal? Chantal, yeah. That is Chantal. That is all seven. Yay. That is uh, seven or three points for you guys. You guys are six for four <laughs> because the rules are dumb. <laughs> Our next question is your base stack question as always. And I'm going to get this one from Sir Missing No. Which dragon type Pokemon has the lowest special attack? All right. Oh. Um, <laughs> we'll use our hint, I guess. This is a yeah. pure dragon, and it's cool. of course like it is also part of an evolutionary line, and it is the smallest part of that evolutionary line. Yeah, I figured. So, <laughs> who is it? Gumi. I don't Tratini? know. Oh wow, a lot of them are pure dragon. This guy's green. All of them are pure dragon. Yeah, except for like Dino. This one's green. <laughs> oh, is it Dreepy? It's probably no. He's ghost. Dreepy's he's ghost. Oh, pure dragon. Pure dragon and green. Oh, 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 Axio. Okay, Axio makes sense. That makes more sense. Yep, Axio. That doesn't have a special attack. <laughs> Axio is correct. <laughs> it has a base special attack of thirty. The next one is Bagon, Gibble, Fracture, Applin, and Dreepy, all tied for forty. <laughs> I forgot Applin was a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh what how many seven that is seven points today it doesn't matter because the only person on the leaderboard is going to be p mcgee with seven he's going to be winning yes that's like the third time this year Woo. <laughs> you were like really close one session i thought everybody else yes yeah, so you got on the board but sigma has won next week we'll be back with you to see who won the the anime gravy gift card uh liger will actually pick it so i don't forget so that is it for Puckle's Pokey Quiz. If you want more of that, you can check us out next week with more questions. And if you want your question read, you can go ahead and submit it over on our Discord. But we are going to kick it on over to the topic. And this week, we have a new review from Dallas23, five stars. Working from home the past seven months has me eavesdropping on coworkers' random conversations. The Puckle podcast has filled this void. Listen to the main feed and Puckle Plus feed helped me take... Help me keep sane in a quiet home and keeps me informed of the latest Pokemon gossip. Green Tauros. Well, thank you for that. And you too can give us a review out iTunes or wherever you listen to the podcast. We really appreciate it. And we hope to catch you on the flip-flop. Now on to the topic. And welcome to the topic. Our topic today is going to be Crown Tundra. I, I don't know what else there is to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's like, I feel like the timing is like, let's talk about Crown Tundra because that's the, that's the new hotness. Yes. I have also really liked it. Like I haven't finished it yet. There's a decent amount to do, which is exciting. Like I put a lot of hours yes. in and like, I've still got tons I can be doing. Which is exciting. Mm-hmm. I liked Isle of Armor. I think that's because I compared it to like Base Swish. But even with like having Isle of Armor to compare Crown Tundra to as well as Base Swish. Yeah. I think Crown Tundra for the most part is my favorite. There's there's I have a couple of nitpicks, but I think they did a lot of things well. I, I want to start with the nitpicks so that we can talk only about good things. Yes. <laughs> that way our iTunes reviews don't get bombed. I think the only nitpick I have is because one of my favorite things about Isle of Armor, like one of the things I was really excited about and was really cool was when I got to Isle of Armor, there was a ton of stuff for me to catch mm-hmm. that I didn't already have yeah. caught. And the thing that with the Crown Tundra was it's like a Pokedex of like 210 or something like that. And when I walked into Crown Tundra, I had 140 of them. That was pr- that's my biggest gripe. That is my biggest issue with it. That is it. Like, I understand why it is that way. I just wish it could have been different. That is all. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fair. Like, that. that's that's my only issue with it, I think, is that it didn't give me enough. It didn't add enough Pokemon to, like, routes, quote unquote. 
Yeah, I was going to say, the new the new things are relatively light. It's yes. like fossils, uh, pseudo-legends, and Nidorans. And yes, that, that is that is And it. Gen 1 and 3 stage poison type Pokemon. Mm-hmm. It, it is very light, and then it's just already a bunch of stuff that you could have already caught. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of underwhelming in that aspect. But I, everything else I think has done really well. I think from in terms of it being a, a DLC for catching legends, I think what the way it does it is done very well. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The legends are done. I like very well. I think I even the ones that don't get stories, I think Dynamax Adventures is the coolest way to do it thus far. Yeah. In terms of like bulk legend hunting, probably mm-hmm. probably ever since like Gen 4, in my recollection, like in Gen 4, all of the legendary like you could catch all of the legendaries that existed up until that point in like Heart Gold Soul Silver, and it was very cool. Um, like the different ways they had you go catch the other legendaries. I think Crown Tundra kind of recaptures that. Yeah, I really really appreciate that. Like the Reggie hunt is really cool. I did finish that. I did finish the Reggie hunt. I didn't get Reggie Gigas yet, but I did do like the four Reggies. I dislike that Reggie Alecki and Reggie Drago are are one per game. It's unfortunate, but like I understand with profiles with profiles. I'm less angry about it because I'm going to be catching the other one later. Too. Yeah, no, no. I so I'm not I'm not super upset about it. It's just kind of a bummer. I would have I mm-hmm. would have loved just like a fifth temple to find. Yeah, yeah. I would have loved a fifth yeah. temple, but I loved finding the four temples mm-hmm. and I loved doing them. I like I, I feel like I have to make this clear because there's going to be somebody who like says I'm super negative. I'm just explaining things that I think would be better. Like, I think what they did is wonderful. Uh, I think going after the uh, the Galarian trio birds is really cool as well. What I liked yeah, about all of those time. was that you weren't locked into doing them in any particular order. Yeah. You can kind of you can kind of pick something, run with it. If you wanted to change partway through because like, oh, you wanted to go catch Galarian Zapdos. Now you can kind of take a break and go do that mm-hmm. um, and then go back to the other story. It wasn't like you got to do Calyrex and you have to do the three birds and then you can finally do the three Reggie. So whatever Pokemon you wanted to play with first of the new legendaries, you can go and get. Right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play the rest of mm-hmm. Crown Tundra with them, which I, which I liked. I, I thought that was nice because there's actually quite a bit of things added. And so being able to pick and choose which one you want to get, I thought was a good a good decision on their part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was really I, – I just – I really loved that. I mean I, I think the creme de la creme for me – I haven't finished um, the – I haven't done like the Ultra Beast stuff yet because I haven't finished the Glorian Birds or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't worry about that. It all it does is add them to your uh, rotation. Oh, that's and, dumb. Yeah, no. I think Calrex, like that storyline. If you look at it and you like bare bones it, it feels very similar to Kung Fu. I think the way it's executed is just done so. It's done better than Kung Fu. I think um, my, mostly because I actually care about Cal- Calrex and I didn't care about Kung Fu. <laughs> 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 and I think in the context, it makes sense because Kung Fu supposed like Isle of Armor is supposed to be this thing you can go to in the middle of your playthrough, um, which I think is kind of a weird thing to make for DLC. But I understand why they did it. Um, but mm-hmm. Crown Tundra is definitely meant to be post game. And I think they, it was they were more able to stretch their legs because it was post game. Yeah. And Calyrex gets like a really interesting storyline. It's the I think it's the first Pokemon in game to actually talk to you in game. Probably because I don't think Mewtwo does ever in the game. No. Yeah, definitely not. So that seems that like seems we were trying to figure out and like Darkrai kind of talks through other people or something like Darkrai, that. Darkrai. But- yeah, but it's very cryptic. It's not like as straightforward. Yeah, no, it's not actual conversational. Speech. Yeah, you never get to like, like actually sit down and like have a conversation with the Pokemon in game until this. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously very spoiler heavy. I apologize in advance for those of you (laughs) who were behind. But it's uh, like Calyrex gets to speak to you and um, you actually like work with Calyrex to like make things happen. It's it's really cool. And I think I I like read a review on Reddit of somebody who played it and they said that it felt like you were in a Pokemon movie when you were doing the Calyrex stuff. And I can't say that Mm -hmm. I disagree. Yeah. Yep, yep. I, I can't say that I disagree. I really think that it was it feels like the closest thing that we've ever gotten to like a Pokemon movie and it felt good. Mm-hmm. I, I really appreciated that. Yeah, like Peony is a fun character. Yeah, I, I, don't, I <laughs> he's an interesting character. He's a character. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Peony. Like, I just I, I mean, don't know how from the main I actually feel where, about him. Like the main game didn't have great characters. It had a couple and then it's like a bunch of unique NPCs mm, essentially yeah. with gym leaders. But Peony I actually enjoy. Yeah, yeah. 
Peony, Peony's okay. Angry. I like that. Um, I like that they've taken the liberty. I really like in the lore of just Sword and Shield, and this is that just saying good things about Sword and Shield. Okay, remember Thatch mm-hmm. does this. Um, so <laughs> this is this isn't for you guys. It's for everybody listening. Um, and but I think one of the coolest things they've done with Sword and Shield has been that they've they have this roster and this lore of gym leaders and type specialists, and they've slowly been adding to it with the DLC. And I mean, it's it's not full right now, obviously, but it's uh, they they've got thirteen out of the eighteen types covered right now as specialists. Oh, that's nice. I hadn't thought that. Yeah, because if you think base switch has ten, right? Yeah. Um, and then you get uh, you get uh, Avery and uh, I forget the girl's name in sword in uh, Clara. Yeah. Um. So that's poison and psychic, and then we just got Peony who steal, mm-hmm. and I I think that's really cool. I I think that uh, really works out well. Is uh yeah. is that peony uh is uh is there and I mean it leaves them open too like there's still another five that they could always just like throw in yeah yeah but it's not like they need to because I think even Ultra Sun and Moon didn't technically have ice and psychic specialists no I don't think they did technically and even Dragon's a stretch with Ryuki but yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I mean Dexio and Senna spe- use psychic and ice pokemon but I wouldn't call them the specialists for that game. I think it's really cool though and it like allows them growth and it's a really cool way to build it in universe. Uh, personally yeah. I would love to see like mm-hmm. another 5 thrown in but that's also just me being like hey I want more DLC because I think Crown Tundra and Isle of Armor like as a package um made made uh I, I think they're good ways for the franchise to go forward, and I think Crown Tundra is a really good way to experience an open world Pokemon game, specifically Crown Tundra over Isle of Armor. Absolutely, Crown Tundra definitely is bigger than Isle of Armor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I also miss like the feeling of getting lost that mm-hmm. never happened in Sword and Shield. <laughs> um, it, like it didn't happen in Base Sword and Shield because there's like one path and then, like maybe one offshoot where you find an item, then you go back to the main path, right? Yeah. I mean, I only just recently found where safety goggles were in the main game. I did not know that area existed off of the straight path. I was, I was surprised. Um, it's like, oh, that route had more to yeah. it? I, yeah, I right. I wouldn't have guessed. Right. It, it wasn't much. It was just the safety goggles. Yeah, but, you know. exactly. It, it, so, like, I feel I feel like Crown Tundra and Isle of Armor were – I. It, it still makes me feel like uh, Sword and Shield were rushed. Like, I don't I – don't, that opinion hasn't changed. Yeah. Because I feel I, like mm-hmm. I, I feel like Crown Tundra and Isle of Armor have been more tech demos almost. Yeah, no, that's what I always thought they'd be. It's like let's see what a real next gen Pokemon yeah. game map could. Yeah, I think I think Crown Tundra is an excellent example of that because they even have like a town like tucked into it and everything. It's, it's just done. It's done very very well in that there, regard. There are some caves that are just mazes, and I love yes. that. It feels like classic Pokemon cave mazes, right? And it's like oh. Nice. I don't know how to get to that item I see over there. My favorite there. thing is still I, is still um somebody in our Discord. I forget who it was. They said I'm uh, I was incredible. I've never been happier to see Zubat in a cave in my entire life, <laughs> 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 which I thought was funny. Like that was good. I think there's like a couple of missed opportunities. Uh, the only one being uh, the other complaint I have is not only did uh, I have 140 Pokemon registered in the Crown Tundra decks. Not many yeah. of them were also in the Isle of Armor decks or any like mo- most of them that were copied and pasted from like the base sword and shield decks were also in the Isle of Armor decks. And I didn't like that. <laughs> like, like, do I really need a- Gyarados in a Magikarp again? Do I need, you know, so many things again? Um, it w- That was kind of frustrating. I-, I mean, don't get me wrong. I am really happy because at least like one of my favorites got back into the game <laughs> uh, in, a- in-, in, a- in the form of Electivire. He's not good, but he's one of my favorites. I'm happy for him to exist. He's one of my. He was one of my yeah. favorite Gen Four uh, additions. I thought it was yes. actually an improvement upon Electabuzz, uh, where Magborder was just kind of an abomination. Yo, absolutely. Electivire has sad. always been my favorite. Like, because I like mm-hmm. when I really got into like wanting to cover Pokemon and like do the podcast and stuff. That was like right before Gen Four came out. And okay. I was trying to yeah, find yeah, an yeah. outlet for that, and I was trying to find an outlet for that. But like, I remember like the pre-release stuff for Gen Four and Electivire was in it. And I was just so stoked for that. I don't mm-hmm. know what it was. It was just his design was really cool to me. And at the time, like at initially in Gen Four, he was actually good because there was yeah, no team platinum. Pre platinum, uh, Electivire was pretty good. And because and you can get a motor drive off, and then you're 
yeah, platinum team preview ended him. I don't know that platinum ended him, but team preview did. Uh, <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> when you when you could blindly switch it into a Gyarados, an attack on Gyarados is like no, you're attacking my Electivire, mm-hmm. and now it's got a, <laughs> now it's boosted. now he's gonna sweep because he had co- <laughs> like Electivire had good coverage. Maybe Overdrive Toxicity pairing with him and VGC could do something. We'll find out. Mm, probably not. Maybe. Probably. Uh, not. Probably not. Wait, no, overdrive don't never mind. Overdrive doesn't target your teammate. Discharge. <laughs> no. No, it doesn't. Discharge. You need to discharge. And even you then need to like, discharge. those strategies already existed. <laughs> <laughs> and it hasn't gotten anywhere. No. Maybe discharge with Reggie Alecki now, because now you have the speed stat to discharge. Nothing you're saying. <laughs> well, maybe with the speed change mechanics with Reggie Alecki, I could see it. Yeah. Um Re- with the Reggie speed Alecki change mechanics. It. Uh, but even that, that just feels like a lot of work to make Electivire work when you already have a Reggie Alecki. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to, I do want to comment because I mentioned Reggie Alecki. Like it, this is probably a good reason, uh, for hidden power not to exist because the one thing yes. holding Reggie Alecki back is not having hidden power ice because he would be an absolute abomination if he could just hidden power ice because nothing outspeeds him without like <laughs> a scarf and like over a 120 speed stat. That's the only way you're getting past Reggie Alecki. <laughs> I, I think Hidden Power being taken out, excuse me, uh, I believe Hidden Power being taken out is one of the best things to happen in Pokemon. Like, I think yeah. that is one of the best things Sword and Shield did, was get rid of mm-hmm. Hidden Power. As much as, like, I hate Dexit and I hate a bunch of other things that they did, um, I really I really appreciate that from a balancing point of view. I do think they took a much better look at competitive than they ever have mm-hmm. in, in Gen 8. I, I really do. Yeah. Because if you look at the stats of like literally everything they've added, they thought this through. They were thinking about it. Oh, like yeah. they like Urshifu is a machine crafted to disrupt typical VGC play. Mimic you. One mm-hmm. speed point. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like literally, like they they have just looked so finely under the microscope about mm-hmm. what they're trying to do. And mm-hmm. Like I'll give them props for that, and that's probably why they didn't want the full decks, at least this generation, because they didn't. They really wanted to yeah. look at everything and make it work a little bit at a time. And I think they can keep doing that. I, I really think they can keep. Yeah, doing I that. like. I'm okay with a slow rollout. Like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So the way I would really like to see it happen, I would, I would like to see it where all of the Pokemon can still be transferred in, like as soon as you get home compatibility. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to see that, but in their official formats, I would like to continue to see the slow rollout. Yeah. It's been really, um, really fun. One, in the, yeah. In VGC, I think it's like, super healthy for it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think, honestly, and I said it before, I think you can make Sword and... I would, you, I would, you would make Sword and Shield what I would call the ultimate Pokemon games if you added two more DLCs or something, or one more big DLC, where it finished the decks and you could almost catch everything in Sword and Shield. I would call that... Would be perfect. that the, I would call that the ultimate Pokemon game, and I would love if that was the, if that was the format here on out for Pokemon. Where it's just like, hey, we're going to add all of the Pokemon in eventually for you to catch. Mm-hmm. But you can transfer them in so you can play around with them, whatever. Um, and give us a 60-minute timer. Yeah. Eh, it's mm-hmm. not too much to ask. 60-minute uh, <laughs> timer, timer and spectator mode. Are, spectator mode over Wi-Fi. That's what I should clarify. Um, yeah. Should, should, are like the two things. Even, even now, like if they just went 60-minute um, timer spectator mode now i would be pretty happy i think sword and shield would be really good i mean spectator mode is a kind of a it, it, it's something that should exist now especially having dealt with covid and them canceling every event they yes. could possibly have that like anyone mm-hmm. that wants to run a pokemon community has like such a hard time of uh hosting and showcasing video content for exactly. like battles and it just feels like yes. really silly to me that they haven't tried to repair that specific aspect of it but I don't know. I, I think that is something that you might see fixed in the next game. Like, I wouldn't be surprised, if, one, um, if the next game, which is, yeah, I'm going to predict right now, uh, is going to be in Gen 8 still. It's not going to be Gen 9. Um, I, I think there's going to be one more game. Because, personally, I think they're just going to do Gen Gen 4 and finish the decks. Yeah, it seems like, it seems more and more like the route they're going. Um, especially with, like, a lot of the Pokemon they've not included. I think it's very telling that half the starters are still missing. It would be a little odd for them to do a Spirit Tomb event again after doing a Spirit Tomb event in this uh, game. Though. I don't think it's terribly. That was a good solution to Spirit Tomb, by the way. I actually thought that was because that that what was it? It was just talked to like it was being like, isn't it generally just like um you have to be online and then you have to encounter this certain gravestone and then you have to talk to like fifty different people and then you can catch Spirit Tomb. Uh, I think the number. 
I think the number's lower it's 40. than that. I thought it was it's like 40. It's 40. I've heard okay. 40, yeah. But it's the character not the characters that say hi, they have to give you an item too, I believe, okay. or something like that. So but it's still well mm-hmm. done and it harkens back to the Spirit Tomb event in Gen 4 where you had to talk to people yeah. in the underground. Oh man, could you imagine a modern day underground? That would be so cool. Uh, I am curious so cool. if we ever got remakes, if they'd continue that or they would just try to find a new workaround for that whole a conversation for another day. Yeah. We could that sounds like a good episode topic in like three weeks. <laughs> On topic, can I express my distaste for the Calyrex forms as they are not really forms? Yeah. A Pokemon has just saddled onto another one. I, I don't know if anybody expected any different. I mean, I guess I wanted a little more of like a fusion or like some kind of like different appearance changes for Calyrex. Maybe Calyrex, like its head changed shape a little bit. Something. Uh, maybe it gets some attributes from the horse or something. That would yeah, be like it, it just yeah. kind of like gets more kingly, like with its crown. Um, it starts to look like much more like like a king. I don't know. It just mm-hmm. it literally like they just put two sprites, to, not sprites, but they put two um animation. They put they stapled two models yeah, together and gave they, them a look. Exactly, that's all they did. Um, and I just I wasn't thrilled. I mean, because you look at like yeah. here, um, um, black and white, and those had some better looking fusion yes. stuff going on. Definitely, and this was. Like I like Calyrex enough, um, and I like the story behind Calyrex. I like the the horses. Um, I just don't care for the final form. <laughs> uh, I don't blame you. I think the horses themselves, like I like the concept. I don't like the execution. Mm-hmm. The horses themselves just feel very bleh. They're mm-hmm. very. I think the problem is they're they're very simple. They're very simple, um, which makes them look too much like just a straight horse. Yes. I was going to say, they look like they just took the Galar- or Galarian Rapidash model and yeah. made it better. <laughs> yeah, especially Spectrier. Yeah, I can really see that with Spectrier. Yeah, I really just, I mean, I did Spectrier in my playthrough and like just seeing the animations with it, I'm just like, man, this looks like you just took a bare horse and then threw three things on it and then you called it good. <laughs> I, I'm just like, that's kind of blah. It's not, it's not that in- exciting. Like, I mean, you look at other Pokemon designs like Ludicolo or... Or something like that. And you're just like, this is a really cool design. And with the horses, I'm like, yep, that's a horse. I was really hopeful they were going to give them like the appropriate stat pool to be allowed to play like online. Because I thought the Mm. combination of their ability, like um, whether it's uh, whatever the ice one or the ghost one was. And with like a nerve was actually kind of interesting for like VGC formats. Because you could have like a legit good ability. Yeah. Well, it's like not a bad ability for VGC because you have like a regular standard ability that like boosts your um your primary attacking stat when you get KOs. But then you also stop anyone from eating berries. So you can kind of – and that's mm-hmm. common in VGC. So you can play with that, but they're, they're 680 BSD, so they're not coming to any regular format. Speaking of that, I saw that – I saw they had 680 BSD and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, cool. So like maybe we're done. Like maybe there's nothing else coming this gen. Yeah. Um, because yeah, like, these are big because legendaries. like that's typical. Oh. Well, I mean, oh, well, I don't want to say typically because like my my data points just Gen Seven, where it's just like yeah, we got six eighty base base stat, um, six eighty base stat Necrozma. Uh, Necrozma. <laughs> we're done. Done. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're we're done. We're just done now. And like I I've walked myself back from that like that initial like jerk to be like okay we're done. Mm-hmm. And and that's only because of Gen Six. I mean, which is another which is the first place that we ever saw like a six eighty base stat. <laughs> Um, because I believe Mega Mewtwo has six eighties. I thought it was seven yeah, twenty. Oh, oh wait, yeah. then Ultra Necrozma seven twenty. Might be. Yeah, oh, no. never mind. Megas I don't even know. We're not done yet. I was. I got six eighty mixed with seven twenty. But we removed all seven twenties from the game. So six eighty is your big, your big benchmark. Yeah, uh, a big benchmark until the Mega DLC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think Mega DLC can still happen. I was so annoyed by Pain, uh, Peony's like uh, his like oh uh, the ultra mega phrase. catchphrase yeah I hated that because I knew for a fact that ultras were in the game and so like that was fine whatever and then he kept saying mega afterwards and I was like wow you're just taunting us with that okay so like slight pet peeve from Isle of Armor they kept call it the um what's the what's the lady's name oh my gosh uh, Muster's wife uh, honey she called you she says she says something where she calls you like she calls you like a spring ducklet. <laughs> And I was just like, you can't call, you can't say that word. <laughs> Ducklet's not here right now, okay? <laughs> don't make, don't remind me that it's not here right now. Uh, uh, so I was like, uh, it's interesting to see their attitude towards Pokemon not in the Pokemon game. Yeah. 
I mean, it kind of makes sense at the same time. Uh, I understand why Megas aren't there from, like, a battling perspective. Uh, like, a competitive perspective. Like, I can see if you had Dynamax and you just let, like, a Mega Dynamax, that could be a problem. Mm-hmm. Oh, before we get complaints, 780. 780 is the total for Mewtwo and friends. 780? I thought... Uh, 780 is Mega wow. Rayquaza and Mewtwo. Crazy. Uh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was 720. Let's do... Uh, 720 might be Arceus, then. Yeah, it is. 720 Arceus. is Arceus. That's 120s. Also not in the game, though. <laughs> Which is interesting. I thought it was really interesting that no no Gen 4 Mythicals made it at all. Yeah. I, I feel like Manaphy should have, if nothing Manaphy else. should have done it. Manaphy, Manaphy, should, Manaphy should have definitely did it. Um, Actually, no. Just Manaphy. Poor Fion. <laughs> I think I think I think the rest of the, like the equivalents for Manaphy are there, right? Because Victini's in the game. It's apparently catchable, but nobody knows how. Um, it's uh, so Victini's there. Um, all the one hundred. Deontay's so there. Jirachi. Yeah, yeah, they're all there except for Manaphy. Yeah, they're all there except for mm-hmm. Manaphy. Yeah, Manaphy feels like it's missing. Like Manaphy's the kind of Pokemon that you, if they did decide to do like that format the tournament we had like a mm-hmm. week ago two weeks ago like manaphy's fine manaphy's not yes. broken you don't have to worry about like spread hypnosis okay is zygarde complete in swish though yeah so zygarde complete has a base stat total of 708 Ooh. i mean it's all hp though. and zashin all and zamazenta <laughs> hit 720 and zashin and zamazenta both hit 720 actually in their crown forms oh that's good for them Good so maybe it isn't over. Never mind. I thought the 680s were telling me it was over. Maybe it's not over. I read Stay into tuned. something that doesn't matter at all. <laughs> regular Mewtwo. Regular Mewtwo has a base stat total of 680. Okay, I'm stupid. We're, I'm just dumb. Like, that's what I've learned. I'm just dumb. <laughs> no, 680 is just your standard, like, box legend. Wow, okay. So I'm just, I'm just dumb. That's what I've learned. I'm just dumb. Target. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just dumb. Thatch doesn't know what he's talking about. He shouldn't run a Pokemon podcast. But even then, Zashin and Zamazenta still hit 720 um, in the crowd yeah. forms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's at the use of an item slot. Yeah, I'm I'm okay if that. I mean, that's the same could be said about Megas. Like you have those, you have stuff, you have yeah, high base. But those powers were hitting 777 with the use of an item slot. Yeah, exactly. Though technically, like their stats are a little higher than that because they get the free boost mm-hmm. when they come in. Yeah. Too. But I think that's a better way of handling like the power. Absolutely, of why is that, it's why Zacian was the number one for that tournament, right? In terms of usage. Yeah, and I never saw Zacian beat me because it <laughs> it's relatively easy to beat too. Were you running Torkoal? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Torkoal. Don't Torkoal care. laughs at Zacian. Oh wow! Oh wow! Uh, um, were scary. Speaking yeah. of legends, okay, so I, I I haven't gotten a lot of time to play with the Dynamax Avengers yet, but that's been a lot of fun. Oh, oh man. Yeah, no. So that, I think this is the last thing to, that we should really talk about because I think yeah. I think Dynamax Adventures out of everything that we've talked about is probably like I, I think everything we talked about beforehand is like future of Pokemon, mm-hmm. like implications and stuff like that. Like this is really cool. We really enjoyed it. More please. Um, and the Dynamax Adventures I think is like the here and now. This is what we should be enjoying for like the next six months. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I I think Dynamax Adventures. I mean it it's it changed raid battling enough to make it good yeah it fixed all of the the less i mean it added some fun to it because it got to the point where like raid battles were like here's four of us with level 100 draco vicious holding choice bands and we're just gonna blast through these really quickly yeah and there's no shields though either like there's no shields so yeah. like, the pacing is better um and all rentals you, it, you get to use rentals which i think is always a really cool mechanic if done correctly not you battle mm-hmm. agency <laughs> I, I i mean i think it's really cool when you get to do that um and i think the 100 percent catch rate on everything is really cool and i also think the upped uh shiny percentages in there is really cool as well so what i heard for those was it was without a shiny term it was like one in 300 and with yes. a shiny term it's like one in 100 yeah i mean so it's kind of yep. like um it's the this is you you need to think about dynamax adventures as the the uh ultra wormholes yeah that, that we went into in uh you some you some because they those also had like super high shiny chances yeah. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. The difference is this one's way more controllable and I think easy to understand. Um, while at the same time allowing for cooperative play to do it. It's a lot more fun to yes. play through and you can actually target Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I want to go for ultra or I want to go for a yes. shiny Necrozma. I'll just save it. And if you don't catch if you catch it in the end and don't keep it, you get to keep it on your little thing and say, yeah, I, I want to go for that, that one, one again. again. Yeah, it's super nice. I. I think it's handled so well. Yes. 
There's like really like it's a really optimized system of gameplay for like, it's like it's really maximizing the mechanic they introduced in this generation because yes. like max rays are a fun like three minute thing but like doing five star raid shuckles because you have to clear it is not very fun. Mm-hmm. Um, this is fun. Dynamax Adventures mm-hmm. super fun. Absolutely recommend. Ten out of ten. Yeah, standard raids seem like they're gonna be uh, not great to go through in Crown Tundra though with how big the map is. I don't plan on doing many regular. I would be yeah. okay with them doing like raid events with the Dynamax adventures. I'm thinking that's what they'll mm. do because this seems like the perfect like summation of what they wanted Dynamax to be. I'm going to disagree with you on that one and say they probably won't because it's a good idea. <laughs> and I don't trust TPCI to do good things all the time. I mean, it makes sense that they would like put something at the end of like a Dynamax adventure, like as a special promotional event. We'll see what happens. I mean, because like we've been having it the last several months where it's just been increases in what shows up in the wild area in terms of typing and all that and certain things. I'm curious to see if they'll incorporate the Dynamax adventure stuff into like future promotionals for whatever the month might be. I don't know yeah. what that's going to look like yet, though. I guess we'll find out in November. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like the because you said it. I wanted to mention it as a quick aside. I really like the map designs they've been doing for the DLCs. They feel much more. Um, it, it's really cool to wander okay, around right? those areas because like yeah. they they go into the next section really well, and so you you kind of get lost in them a little bit. Which again is something I don't get a lot of out of Pokemon anymore is getting lost in an area. I mean, I would say in Sun and Moon I got lost occasionally mm-hmm. because I was just searching, but like this yeah. one I would legitimately get lost, kind of like Breath of the Wild style lost. Yeah, because like wild OG mm. wild area, you don't get lost in. Like it just no, doesn't happen. It's not it's uh, basically impossible. Unless, like enough. it's like it's just like no. a really flat. I imagine OG wild area as like the N sixty four polygons of wild area, and now mm. we're actually at Switch wild area, <laughs> and like yep. the difference is very stark. Oh, absolutely, it's very stark, and I think we could eventually just get to something like Crown Tundra for an entire Pokemon game very easily. Uh huh. And that's what I'm kind of hoping. Like Generation Nine is. It's just Crown Tundra it's, all day, every day. I imagine it'll be on Switch. Um, just the way they do oh, gaming yeah. right now, they like to do two generations per console. So I, I feel like it could be like a really optimized game on Switch, and I'm really hopeful for oh, it. Oh, yeah. I Even then, I don't even know, like, in general gaming overall, like, does Nintendo even really move away from the Switch? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there's no incentive to. <laughs> I don't think there's any incentive to, and if they do anything, I would just expect, like, a more powerful Switch. Even when after the Wii was such a success... They just tried to make another Wii, and mm-hmm. they literally tried to just call it the Wii U. I think with the way that the Switch is so successful, they'll probably keep the Switch. And I think the only reason the Switch is doing so well is because it's such a powerful handheld. Mm-hmm. And honestly, as much as they'll say like people typically play their Switch in handheld mode like 90% of the time or whatever, I think having that 10% of the time where you can plug into the TV is a huge thing for a lot of consumers. Yeah. Yeah. I've moved to TV, Abby. Because, like, I, I'll go between both. Like, I switch between both all the time. And I think that convenience alone is just ginormous. Mm-hmm. Especially, I love doing it for Pokemon. Like, that's my mm-hmm. one of my favorite things to do for Pokemon. That's where we leave it. That's where we should leave it. I, I would say Crown Tundra, 10 out of 10. Well, I'll say 9.5 out of 10 because I want more new Pokemon to catch. Also, Galarian Star Tournament's kind of bland. Uh, I haven't even gotten is, there, I, but I, I, know I, because I didn't expect much it from it now. anyway. <laughs> I just like wanted like one or two cool cameos, like for partners you could partner up with, like like a Cynthia or, or a Lance or something like that. And it's just not there. No, you get the least yep. cool cameo, and they are they're from the game. Itself. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know it's 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 underwhelming in that aspect. But I, honestly, honestly, everything that happened makes me go. Somebody at Game Freak legitimately thought, man, models are hard. <laughs> and I think I think that's what everything has shown me so far because they literally haven't brought back any Pokemon with more than two forms. Is there even a way to switch between uh, Incarnate and Therian form? Do they put the mirror in the game or no? Yeah, the mirror's here. And like they they haven't put in like things like Saw's Buck, which would have been really good in this in in the uh, Crown Tundra. I think in terms of the ecosystem, because you could you could have probably had almost all of the forms in the Crown Tundra. <laughs> Yeah, Sawsbuck's a weird one that they probably could. Yeah, I would have loved Sawsbuck in a place like this because you could have had like a couple of versions in the Isle of Armor yeah. and then uh, the other couple right. in Crown Tundra. Um, and just that way, like that way, you don't need to make it seasonal. Just like they're in a location, and that location with the weather is what it's going to be. But oh well, missed opportunity. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I think it's mostly just because of the uh, multiple models, and I think that was legitimately their problem. And I think that transfers even over mm-hmm. to the character models. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm hoping they fix that problem in the future. Absolutely. On that note, though, 
I think it's a this is a good place to stop. And we're going to take a short break and be right back at you with the Pokemon of the episode. We'll catch you on the flip flop. Pokemon of the episode. And welcome to our Pokemon of the episode. Our Pokemon of the episode this week is National Dex number 834, Dreadnaw, the Bite Pokemon. With jaws that can shear through steel rods, this highly aggressive Pokemon chomps down on its unfortunate prey, which is very fitting considering what it does on this team. It does have strong jaw, but you'll <laughs> never use it. You'll use Swift Swim. Because <laughs> it has Swift Swim. Dreadnought has Swift Swim and it's much better. I was thinking to myself the other day that like hidden abilities were like, they, like their value has been deflated. But at the same time, I'm okay with that because it used to be really bad to get them. So... When yeah. they were introduced, it was horrible. Like, the introduction of hidden abilities was the worst thing ever. <laughs> and now everything can just have a hidden ability, because we have the patch for it. Problem solved. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yay. But Dreadnought is a, uh, I mean, it's a snapping turtle. It's going to snap your head off. And I don't think his base stats are bad. He was my favorite one from the, uh, he was my favorite one from the reveal cycle of Gen, Gen 8. Mm -hmm. He has a base HP of 90, base attack of 115 defense of 90 but all of these numbers are really good special attack of 48 don't care we don't care at all uh special defense of 68 that's that's bad and <laughs> 74 speed 74 speed's not bad though like especially with swiss swim in alola that would have been like 33 speed so yes. alola all of the pokemon were on island time in alola i don't know what that was he's a turtle and he's faster than alola it's fine <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, snapping? I don't know if you've ever seen a snapping turtle, but those guys move. Dude, those guys mm. move. Those guys are scary. All right, but we got a VGC team today for it. Um, this is for season six, so it runs out by the end of the week. <laughs> yeah, use it quick. You can uh, you can try this team out. Uh, I'm going to take this Dreadnaw here because it's Dreadnaw. Mm -hmm. He's holding... Sh I mean, I played with this team already this week, and I had a good time with it on Showdown. It, it is very easy to pilot, in my opinion. It's a, It's got one way to pilot. Yes. Um, the strategy is make it rain and don't let it stop. It's got choice band, swift swim. He is 252 attack, 252 speed, jolly nature, make him as fast as he can. Uh, head smash, rock slide, liquidation, superpower. And it pairs well with Pelipper because it's Pelipper. Mm -hmm. Pelipper is the ultimate drizzle setter. That's not Kyogre. And he is running Focus Sash with Drizzle, 252 Special Attack, 252 Speed with the Timid Nature and Scald, Hurricane, Tailwind, and U-Turn. The times have never changed. It is a Pelipper. Uh, could you ma Oh, man. Tailwind in the rain. That'd be great for this team. <laughs> this, this, team is, this team is just like, is just Swift Swim. And speed control, like, I, I don't know if I can emphasize it enough, but I think the number one thing that anybody can do when they get into Pokemon, if they like, they want like a list of things to learn. I think speed tiers is the number one thing. Speed tiers helps oh, yeah. a lot. But when you're running Swift Swim Rain, you usually don't need to know them because you're faster than everything. Uh, I think I think, Swi I think Swift Swim is very good in that regard. But I think it's still good to know your speed tiers in general, just so oh, yeah. you, you can understand that. And then you can understand the, the reason for speed control, which in this case is just rain on this team, which I think is one of the easier ways to do speed control. And currently in the meta, it makes it very easy to do. <laughs> Especially with Dynamax. There's no Torkoal, there's no Tyranitar, so... And there's no... Is, did Torkoal get booted? Torkoal didn't get booted, though. Torkoal's gone. It's Torkoal and Tyranitar. Yeah. Are. Yeah, all the weather setters are gone. It's like, are they running Ninetales? Perfect. Alolan Ninetales? Like... Yeah, nobody cares about Alolan Ninetales. Alolan Ninetales is poop. I should use this for my, for my, uh, for my gym team for Fall League. Just use this. Throw some fire types on it. <laughs> you could legitimately run this team as like a, a BSS team too. There's like there's like zero uh, team moves on this team. You can just leap that for you. That's true. That's true. You take protect off, add some coverage. Yeah. So I guess somebody else should talk about the rest of the team. That's not Pelipper and Dreadnought. That's fine. I can talk about. Okay, so I'll do our uh, I'll do our Dynamax duo, uh, which is okay. We got King Kingdra with a Life Orb, uh, obviously Switch yes. Swim, uh, Modest Nature. Uh, Muddy Water, Draco Meteor, Hurricane, Protect. Uh, this is one of your primary go big options, and it's probably the one that's usually best. But if you don't like the matchup because there's a lot of fairies, uh, you got Ludicolo with a Koba Berry, also Swift Swim, also Modest Nature. Muddy Water, Leaf Storm, Ice Beam, Protect. So either of those go big and do a lot of damage. 
win-win. Yeah. Well, uh, I love both of these. Like I, any team that makes Ludicolo good is a good team. <laughs> and usually it's right. Yes, it, it is always right. So last up, we've got Seismitoad with leftovers and Swift Swim because we're running out of items, so it gets leftovers, I guess. We're actually running a lot of HP into it, and then the rest of it's mixed into special attack and speed. You'll see it when you see the team. But uh, Modest Nature again, Muddy Water, Earth Power, Sludge Bomb, and Substitute for the fun. And last up, we have Escavalier, the one non-Swift Swimming Brain Pokemon on the team. Holding its Oka Berry, because in the rain with an Oka Berry, you're never really going to take it down with one fire hit. Mm -hmm. Ability Overcoat, so it gets to ignore those powders. and That's really nice, though, especially with, like, Amoongus all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, Max HP, Max Stack, Standard Escavalier with the Zero Speed Brave Nature. Megahorn, Iron Head, Razor Shell, which I just learned that this <laughs> thing got, and Sword Stance. Mm-hmm. It's a scary threat, especially if you Dynamax it after a sword mm -hmm. stance. That that's just gonna ruin everyone's day. It's a good answer for Trick yeah. Room too, if that happens against you. If they have a Trick Room team, that's like it's the bane of the rain team. So it's like, oh, what you gonna do, Trick Room? I'm yeah. slower than you. <laughs> I can guarantee that. Very true. Oh man, this team's good though. I I actually enjoyed running it this week. I definitely recommend, it, especially if you're trying to get into VGC. Like this is a great team to try out. It's like a very good team for the yes. moment that it's in uh, because all the weather's gone. A lot of the problems that would check it otherwise are gone. I know Venusaur in there, no sun. Um, so it has a really, really good window. I, I think that's, I mean, I that's why I think, I honestly think VGC, uh, I think, well, I think season six has particularly been very good because of that, because you are capable of just like uh, playing, I think, I think the biggest problem that a lot of new players when they come into the game have is they go, I really want to use this Pokemon. Yeah. And I mean, I, I guess problem is the wrong way to phrase that, but they always want to use a certain Pokemon that they have an attachment to because they want to make it good. And I think series six in general made it very possible for them to be good in some, in some niche way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sad to see series six go. I think series six was probably one of the most balanced that we've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it was fun to look at teams. It was fun to play teams. Yes. I, I mean, we made Flapple work, which I think is amazing. So made Flapple work well, right? There's nothing. Yeah. I, like series six is the most fun VGC that I've ever had ever. <laughs> the teams were very diverse. You could make things work. It was fun. Uh, I am sad to see you go. <laughs> I hope we do bannings again. Uh, I hope we do it again. I, I mean, I, maybe in January or March, we'll see it happen again. Uh, I could I, I could definitely see that happening. But on that note, uh, this is going to be this is a good place to stop. We are going to kick it on over to the mailbag. It's mail time. Send in your email. And welcome to The Mailbag. The Mailbag, as always, is brought to you by the fictional energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. 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 And so this is the segment of the show where we read your emails on air. All you have to do is send us an email at pucklepodcast at gmail.com. Answer our mailbag question or just honestly send us an email about anything about Pokemon and we'll probably read it on the show or you'll have a chance to have it right on the show. Uh, we typically do about three per week for time constraints. But if you spark good conversation... Among us, we'll give you what's known as the Green Taurus Badge, which turns your name to a funky green over on the Discord server. Ooh. It does reset every year. So the earlier you get in the year, the more longer you have it. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get started. Our first email this week is going to be from uh, Fel Maloney. And I am going to get this one. So our, our friend Fel says... Hi, Puckle folks. This is Fel Maloney, and it's the first time I write. I started listening to you ahead of the Switch release and haven't stopped since. I am really excited for Crown Tundra or Town Crundra, and your podcast is hyping me up bad, Town Crundra. Did we make that joke last week? I forgot. Yeah, you did it somewhere. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I, I'm okay with that. Town Crundra. When I was 10, Red and Blue landed in my native Spain. I have very fond memories of the first three gens, but I stopped playing after that. Swish felt like the perfect chance to jump back into the main series, and I'm loving it. Imagine not having been around for the past five gens and seeing mons like Drifloon for the first time in the wild area in 2019. 
which is why I'm also terrible when it comes to competitive and why I find the podcast so informative in that aspect. You guys have some insane Pokemon knowledge in quotes. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I like that I have a person that likes my my fun little quips. <laughs> Back to the topic, I tend to agree with Thatch on how the Isle of Armor expansion pushed the boundaries of the wild area and made for a much better experience than base Swish, and can't wait for the Crown Tundra for the first time and see what it brings to the table. It did good. It did good, kid. It did good. As with the Isle of Armor, I guess I'll find a new Pokemon I didn't know existed, or some old favorites of mine like Dragonite or Absol. Now for the controversy. I have not been a huge fan of raids. I find them rather boring because I don't have friends who play. I really hope they make legendary raid den exploration a bit more fun than just a pile of long raids. Oh, than a bunch of long raids. I sure hope not all fights are with five star sh with shields. Thanks for reading and keep up the great work, Fel Maloney. I mean, I think all of those problems have been addressed. I think I think Dynamax Adventures not having shields is huge. And I, I wouldn't. I don't know if I would say they're five star raids, but I mean, they're not. They're not easy, but they're the, they're just right in terms of difficulty. They're not easy, but they're like fair. They feel fair. Exactly. I, I think they feel fair and I think they are exactly where they should be. I think everything that he thought might be a problem is going to be it's just gone now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like last night on Discord, we had both of the Dynamax Adventure chats running. So that was cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But by the way, because he says he doesn't have anybody to play with. He should 100% come to the Discord server and play with people on the Discord server. Yeah, like, just go to the Tradesman Raids channel, and as long as you're not doing it, like, in the middle of yeah. the day for everyone. I mean, there's a there's a decent European contingency, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. Fair. Th that's fair. I don't know if he, he said he says he's native to Spain. I don't know if he's still living there or not, but there, there, if you're still somewhere in Europe, uh, Europe, there's a good there's a good chunk of, like, people who live in England and stuff in the community. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Yeah, and, like, if you can get three people... It, Mm -hmm. can work fine. <laughs> Two people might be a challenge. Yes. Three people can work. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So uh, let me go ahead and let's get on to this next email. Our next one is going to be from, oh my gosh, I see the name on the email, but I don't want to say it because that's not the name they told us to call them. From Lucifer in the Discord. So he says, hey, Puckle crew, I've been listening for a long time now and love the podcast. It especially helps me get through my Tuesday at work because he's Australian. And it always helps me with my VGC knowledge, too. I'm not particularly masterful in VGC, but can often hold my own, thankfully. I want to incorporate Dunspurs into more teams, though, as it's my favorite Pokemon. We're so sorry. I know. One day, maybe, he'll be okay. <laughs> no. One year. No. When he gets an evolution, everyone will Never. get one. Never. The next regional Dunsparce will get uh, a regional evolution. Yes. Anyways, when it comes to the Crown Tundra, there seems to be a plethora of similarities between the max rate adventures and ultra wormholes. What I'm most excited about is the chance for a viable shiny hunting method for shiny hunting method for this generation. Wow, you got a lot of this right. It's two days yes. ago. Yes. <laughs> this is a much better shiny hunting. This is so much better than shiny hunting. Oh yeah. With the addition of the endless mode they are introducing, I am very hopeful that it will become a shiny hunting method with a decent pool of Pokemon. It is a good pool, too. Oh my gosh, the pool's giant. Yep. I can't wait to play VGC with my boy Metagross and enjoy max raid adventures with everyone in the Puckle Discord. Um, and he just lets us know his name is Lucifer. Thanks, Lucifer. Perfect. Thank you, Lucifer. Uh, I think... Oh, I'm going to let Sigma get the last two because he really wanted this one from Bam with an exclamation point. Bam! 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 <laughs> Hello, Pokelonians. I think this was the first time that I was excited to encounter a Zubat in a cave. Catch you all on the flip-flop. <laughs> no green tourist badge, but good enough. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so our last one today is actually from Emo Emo. All right. So sorry for the late submission. This was last night, so it wasn't actually yeah, that late. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's before Saturday morning, which is all that matters. That, that is all that matters. It's like, this came in Friday night. Sure. <laughs> it's fine. I can only imagine how many you're getting just before taping. I haven't had much of a chance to play yet, as I just landed in Denver to visit my family over the weekend. We are visiting our almost two-year-old niece, whose first Pokemon was an Eevee. We bought her a plush, and she even ran to get it when she saw me on FaceTime the other day. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to clear two of the legendary quest lines on the plane, though. And I have to say, 
Even though I'm not the biggest fan of legendary Pokemon, I am in love with Regieleki. <laughs> the way he bounces from side to side with his little legs is just adorable. And the fact that he's my favorite type is a bonus. I certainly can't wait to jump on Discord and play some Dynamax adventures with the community, but it'll have to wait for now. Keep up the great work and catch you on the flip-flop, M-O-M-O. Ah, oh, that's a good one. Uh, thank you for that, M-O-M-O. We hope your uh, your niece enjoys whatever you bring them. <laughs> Reggie Lecky is so much better than Reggie Drago. Reggie, Reggie Lecky is better than Reggie Drago. <laughs> yes, uh, that is that is the answer. But uh, it's uh, but thank you for that. Thank you to everybody who sent the emails in. Uh, do we have a winner for the Green Taurus badge? And why is it Felix? Um, that's sure. the winner. Yeah, Phil Maloney, you got it. Yeah, he said I could call him Felix in there, so I'm fine. Um, okay. So yeah, if you come to the Discord server, we will give you the Green Tauros badge. You can send us an email in next week, letting us know what you thought so far of Crown Tundra. Send that in to PucklePodcast at gmail dot com. Uh, and until next week, if you want to keep up with the wonderful Puckle Podcast and uh, all of us over here at Puckle, you can do so in a variety of ways. First of all, you can go over to you can go over to a Discord server. That's the best place to go. You can go over to Twitter where Sigma will keep you updated. <laughs> Pretty much all of the random fun things he finds. You can go over to our uh, our Tumblr, our Facebook, and our Instagram for more for more goodies. Additionally, you can go ahead and uh, check out our YouTube channel where you can see P. Mickey use that Dreadnought team, which is very fun. Um, and then you can also go ahead and... And check us out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast. And if you're a patron, we're going to start doing some Dynamax adventures together uh, once a week. So get ready for that over on stream at twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast. Uh, you can, of course, subscribe to us with any Twitch Prime membership to help support the show. You can also support us by going to Public and buying a t-shirt there. Or you can just go to Patreon at patreon.com slash Puckle Podcast. Uh, and remember, at the $15 tier in November, you do get um, those sweet, sweet badges sent to you with a coupon. <laughs> I also need those sweet, sweet badges sent to me in general still. So we're waiting. <laughs> we're waiting. They should be here. They should be here by early November, though. Uh, on that note, though, we are going to go ahead and uh, I guess this is a place to end it. I have been Trainer Thatch. I've been our Sigma. And I have been P. McGee. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time. <laughs>